Female cat, adult. She's probably probably been a mother before. We'll find out. And this is the one that was uh, is a feral. So you you saw how we have to get, prepare for the feral cat to get to him to get him immobilized for for safety's sake. Now they're in here and they're on the isoflurane at two percent. And kitties seem to run very well on two and a two one and a half to two in that area there. And, and so. We do not hook them up on a monitoring system. Once they get in here, it is quickly enough. We can see that they're breathing. We go on through the surgery. The gas is coming into this little chamber, and the chamber is sitting over this uh, tub, which has a screen in it, and there's a tube that sucks the, uh, the air, the gases that have escaped out, and put it outside, instead of having it uh, accumulate in the surgical uh, room. Okay, adult cat umbilicus, the belly button, anterior bridge of the pubis, and we're going to make a small incision in the middle third. We're about half, we're one third, one third, one third, and one third. Now this one, you can already see that she probably was a mother in order to have this kind of blood supply up here to her. To her breast area. I'm going to try and go down and right between them, the breast lines that is, and I can see the little line that's called the lena alba, it's the middle of the cap. And these, again, the blood is coming from little skin bleeders, and by the time the surgery is over, they will have stopped on their own, so I, I don't concern myself whatsoever about, about that except to just be able to see. Okay, yep. And it's confirmed. I can tell that this uterus has had a litter in it. I pulled up. This is the ovary. On the top of my finger right there. That's what we got to get out. Clamp off down below the ovary and place a second clamp and then slide up and making sure that the ovary is on top. And when I transect here, it is out there, not left in my kitty. Suture material for kitty cats all the way through. I use 5 watt stainless steel, suture of choice in all spay and neuter clinics. Very reliable. Make a circus, a tie around the, uh, the, the, the pedicle there, crimp it, and then I cut it off. I trace back and quickly find the other one. Similar move of <clears throat> isolating the ovary up above, it's still right there. Away, cut away so that it gives me a chance I can just put the stainless steel around, make the tie down, crimp it. Stainless steel, less under pressure, is totally secure just like that. And I replace it back in with no anxiety, no fear, no any concern. Now, your bifurcation, two horns, back to the body of the uterus. Now we're going to make a circlage around the body of the uterus. Now on this one I'm going to do a little flash and now there's a little pre-crush in there. And I cinch down. Now this one I'll go ahead and put a square knot on it just so that you know that I can do that. And I cut it off right at the, at the wires tie there. uterus away and replace it back down inside the body. Now at this point I'll uh, take a moment and put, uh, put my wire in my, my needle.
this is the one downside. You have to do your own needles as you go. You don't have the luxury of having it swaged on to the ready packaged material. But my material costs about a three to four cents for the entire surgery and a package of uh, the fancy new uh, materials runs about five dollars. So five dollars and two cents, no comparison. Right now I'm making a cruciate closure. I'm going in at the caudal end of my incision and I come out and then just swing back around, go through the front frontal portion of it. And that forms just a little X right over the uh, once hole. Once this is cinched down, it absolutely obliterates the hole. It does not exist. Square knot, cut close to the knot, not going anywhere. Stainless steel is non-reactive. The body does not even know that it's in there. And it's very strong. So now you've heard the three reasons why stainless steel is the suture material of choice for a spay and neuter clinic work. Now I'm placing subcutaneous subdermal stitches so that the, stitches, the client does not have to come back and have them removed. In this case, as it is a feral cat, um, the likelihood of catching them again and bringing them back for suture removal, absurd. It ain't going to happen. So you have to do this. And that's what I do routinely on all of them. And again, we have have it to where the two edges when they come together are absolutely even no sliding over of one over the other one and just to keep I call it a water seal and just to keep the edges there just a hint of um, surgical adhesive many kinds out there and now it won't even do peaky won't even peek open on you and she's done